Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Word of the Lamb Ministries welcomes you to Sunday message. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know about everybody else. I just know about me. I know about the people here. We're so glad to be in your midst and midst of the Lord. Amen. To be able to say some things and do some stuff. Amen. Glory to God. I can't wait for what God has in store for us today. And amen. I want to let everybody know. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Once again, amen. That we're going to actually be doing communion today again. Amen. Glory to God. So come on and be with us at the end. And then I also got a special message. Amen. So please hold on to the end. To the message is over. You might just enjoy it. Amen. Glory to God. In the midst of all that, I would like to turn this over to our own evangelist, Lady Sunshine. But before I do, I want to say happy Mother's Day to every single mother out there. We thank you and appreciate you for all that you do, even the hard work that's seen and unseen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Welcome, family, friends, and visitors. You are with Word of the Lord. Worldwide Ministry, the official church without walls. Feeding your faith and doubt will start. We have weekly services online and on our conference line. Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Bible study. Tuesdays and Thursdays on the prayer line at 7 p.m. where we will pray for you. Every other Wednesday, we have our own fun, fantastic fellowship time with the book club, where the book that we are reading and the times and dates that we are meeting, please go to our website at wordofthelamb.org. That is wordofthelamb.org. And every Friday for Friday Encouraging Word, where many times we have guests speakers and preachers. We have Bible trivia, poetry night. We have a plethora of services, unique ones on Friday Encouraging Word. You never know what's going to happen on Friday Encouraging Word, but you're always guaranteed a good time in God. So come on out. Don't be a part of the I Should Have Been There Club. Every first Saturday, which was yesterday, we had First Fruit Prayer. Every first Saturday of the month, First Fruit Prayer between the hours of 12 noon and 1 p.m., giving God the first fruit of all that we have that belongs to him. And every Sunday, you get it right here and in your social favorite media, right there, that button, whichever your favorite social media is, we are live with our own beloved Pastor Brian, bringing the word of God to the people of God for such a time as this. Sunday message at 11 a.m. And we also have Sunday at 10 a.m. Our littlest treasures, the little lambs, little church for boys and girls. Why don't you bring your little lamb to learn about the great lamb of God? Little Lambs Church, every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also, we have Unity Prayer, which is absolutely wonderful. We encourage each and every one of you to come on out. It is Monday through Friday. You can choose a day and a time. We are having prayer every single day, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., we have prayer at 12 noon, or some may call it noonday prayer. And we have prayer at 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, unity prayer. Come on out and join us to pray for our global community. And we have a men's and women's ministry. Brothers with Knowledge is the men's ministry. And we have the women's ministry. Sisters devoted to praise. I also would like each and every one of you to know that is 
a very important date coming up. May 20th is a special conference sponsored by the Women's Ministry. Yeah. Our own evangelist outlaw. She is uh, put together this wonderful platform for the Women's Ministry. And we have Pat George Walker, an international speaker that will be there. Men, women, children, and teens, you're all welcome. It's going to be an awesome time. So we welcome you for that on May 20th. See that day just next month. And we would like each and every one of you to know thank that you, we thank you from the bottom of our heart for your generous giving. If you would like to partner with Word of the Lamb and partner with us in your generous giving, you can do so. We have a QR code right on your screen. We also have a text to give for your convenience. And we have a donate here button on our landing page at the bottom of each page on wordofthelamb.org. We also have for your convenience, if you'd like to mail your generous donation, you can do so at PO Box 320-391, Hartford, Connecticut. 06132. Again, our mailing address, PO Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. We also would like to hear from each and every one of you. Send us a letter. We'd love to hear the awesome good news of what God is doing in your life. Send us a praise report. We will praise with you and read your letter to encourage someone else to hang on because God is already in the midst. Also send us prayer requests. We have prayer warriors on the line even now and we will be in intercessory prayer for you for God's perfect will be done in each and every one of your lives. Also, if you're interested in membership, you can email us at wordofthelamb at outlook.com. Wordofthelamb at outlook.com. And again, you can email us any questions that you may have. And if you just want to know what must I do to be saved, if you have that question in your heart, email us. We can't get you to heaven, but we can point you to the right direction. And at this time, Again, we thank you. And if you would take a moment out right now to give toward the ministry, we want you to know that your generous donation is tax deductible. In addition to being tax deductible, we want you to know where your donation goes. We have outreach of clothing ministry a food pantry. We also have a card ministry for those that are sick, shedding, and those who need encouragement. And I will put myself on the list, each and every one of us dealing with everyday life things. We always need to be encouraged. And we have that in place for each and every one of you. Also, we have gift baskets. Year round when it's needed, we do that for the community. And we do so much more. We're doing a book bag, a book bag drive this summer. We're doing so many things. And we have so many things in plan. So we just want you to know that every time you give, you're impacting the community as a whole. So we thank you from our house to your house. May God bless you in abundance for giving generously to all that is God's kingdom. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Están con Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries, la iglesia oficial sin paredes, dando la comer a su fe y no dando la comer a su duda. Nosotros tenemos muchísimos servicios por la semana. En los lunes, estudios bíblicos. Martes y jueves tenemos hora de oración. También tenemos el miércoles un club de libros y los viernes tenemos Viene Palabra de Apoyo, en donde tenemos diferentes predicadores y tenemos juegos bíblicos y muchísimas cosas que sucede los viernes Palabra de Apoyo. Uno nunca sabe lo que va a suceder 
herviene palabra de apoyo, pero todos estamos garantizados un buen tiempo en la palabra de Dios. También tenemos el primer fruto del mes que son los sábados, de 12 al día hasta la una de la tarde. Y todos los domingos aquí y en tu preferido comunicación social a las 11 de la mañana con nuestro pastor Valle tenemos la palabra general del de mensaje general, la palabra de Dios para la gente de Dios. También tenemos iglesia para los niños y las niñas más pequeñas, nuestros tesoros más chiquitos, que tenemos las ovejitas más pequeñas. Trae tu ovejita para que aprenda de la oveja más grande que es el sacrificio de su único hijo Jesucristo. A este momento le damos las gracias de antemano por su donación generosamente para ese ministerio, que va a hacer muchas cosas en la comunidad. Y ahí tenemos en la pantalla el QR code para su donación. También tenemos el link de PayPal y también tenemos un text to give que pueden donar por el texto también. Y si quieren mandar su donación por el correo, también tenemos nuestra dirección que es postal 320391. Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. Les damos la gracia, las gracias antemano y bienvenidos familias y todo el mundo. Y que Dios los bendiga. Y también le queremos a decir a todas las madres por Latinoamérica y en Puerto Rico que tengan un buen día, día de las madres. We're thanking everyone at this time and from our house to your house, we're We are encouraging everyone to have a wonderful Mother's Day today. And I thank my own daughter and those on the line with my children um, because we have many, you know, many mothers and we're just yes, God. love you and appreciate you and love the Mother's Day message you have. Thank you. God bless you. And we turn this over to Pastor Brian. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As Amen. the woman of God said, she was just so happy to let you know that all happy to all mothers and Mother's Day. Amen. Out mm -hmm. there today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm excited this morning. Amen. I woke up a little bit different than I did the day before. Now, I woke up this morning uh, with a smile on my face. I woke up uh, with the thoughts in my mindset that uh, it is God who touched my face. I woke up this morning by his grace. I woke up this morning to keep up this pace. I woke up this morning to win this race. I'm excited today for all the things that must be done. And in the course of this day, we must remember to have a little bit of fun. I'm reminded because the vision that God gave me last night, this morning, amen, on what I'm speaking about or what I'm going to speak about made me smile in a way, amen. It brought me into some secular stuff, you know, some things that we've done, amen. Glory to God. I know today is Mother's Day and amen, glory to God. I, I'm giving honor to each and every one of the mothers out there, amen. Glory to God, each and every one of you. I thank you for what you've done. Mothers that are here and mothers that are past, mothers 
that are there, the instilling that is in there, some who are mothering right now and instilling in them, and some who are getting ready to become mothers for the very first time, amen, that they be blessed to instill into their children the right way and the right things to do. But giving honor to God who is the head of our life. Hallelujah. To all of the pastors and chief overseers, the, the ministers and the mm, XMs, meaning Christians in all their appropriate and wonderful places. Uh, with the highest regard and intellectual integrity, I sit before you today. Amen. Glory to God. I want to expound the word of God to you. Amen. But I, I need you to be tuned in to me today. And amen. Glory to God. I, I don't want you sitting on me today. Amen. Glory to God. I want to be able to do this. And I'm going to have a little bit of fun doing it. Amen. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said to me, come in, into the house of the Lord. See, my feet have been standing by the gate, old Jerusalem. Oh, a day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Surely, goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need somebody just to say glory to God today. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you know, you. I, need, I need an amen coming from somebody. Amen. 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 You know, I need to know somebody to tell me to go ahead and preach it now. Go ahead and preach it, Pastor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to start off now. Don't get mad at me. And I, 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 I love each and every one of you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Once again, please stay tuned because we will have a special message. I will be putting that forth. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want y'all to be able to tune into that. Amen. But I need you to go ahead and just rock with me a little bit. I'm going to bring you back to the 1980s. Well, some of us didn't wear these collars <laughs> then. Amen. Some of us didn't have this shirt that popped like this. Amen. Some of y'all on the line know who I'm talking about. Y'all know y'all was in the club. Yeah, I was doing y'all thing, moving back and forth. And sometimes you got into the 90s and you were hearing some songs. And all of a sudden, one of the songs that came out, I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to just have a few words of it. It said, move, get out the way, get out the way, get out. You remember that song? It said, move, get out the get way, get out the way, get out the way. That's the title of my sermon today is move, get out the way. Glory to God. Now, when I wrote this, I wrote down the words and I just looked around and I said, God, you know, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not there. You know, I don't dare, I'm not there no more. But he didn't tell me that you couldn't take certain parts of a song and use it to the advantage of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now see. Move, get out the way. I bet you you use that sometime during this week. I know I might have. I got to be, I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty. I am guilty. You know, of telling people while I'm out there on the road. Some of y'all might have heard me have a conversation. I might have been driving and you might have been on the phone and you might have heard me say, get out the way, move. Come on now, y'all be driving, trying to get somewhere, somebody jump in your way, you going, you over there trying to get into something, you in the lane, and all of a sudden they jump in, and they do 45, and you know that you, you doing 65, and they doing 45, and nobody else letting you in on the other side, so now you ain't have no chance but to slow down, and now you got a little bit of attitude, because 
the person in front of you ain't driving that fast. And the first words that come out your mouth might, might, might be, I don't know what gonna first come out, but I do know one of the words might be move out the way. You know, some of us might be not only say move out the way, but they be beeping on the horn, beep, 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 beep. But what I learned is that sometimes while we're in the way and somebody gets in the way, we have to learn patience. Amen. Sometimes amen. things that come into our direction, amen. This is, I'm going way off the message now because amen, but God just, the Holy Ghost is going through it. So we're going to let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost is going to do. But sometimes we have to learn patience, amen. We have to learn that sometimes the obstacles and things that are in front of us are sometimes there to slow us down. And sometimes it's there to, to cause you to, just reevaluate. Sometimes it's there just to cause you to realize that in certain things that you are not in control, to bring you back into that aspect. Because a lot of us, you know, when we're driving, or I'm just using driving as the aspect because that's what I usually do when I'm driving. And usually when I'm driving, right, I'm, I feel like I'm in control. I'm moving, I'm moving. I can move to every lane. I can do what I need to do, drive fast, drive slow, whatever. And sometimes you just, after a while, you realize that while you get stuck in the traffic, you're not in control. You got an attitude because you're stuck in traffic. You could beep your horn, but it ain't going to get you, ain't going no further. You can cut through in different places and try to make your way through by cutting in this lane and that lane and that lane. But sooner or later, you still got to stop. Sooner or later, you still got to have to do some things. See, I, 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 I know I got an issue I'm working on right there. You know, I learned that patience is I have to learn patience and I. I still. I still have patience, but I still want that clear path, though, because if I can get that clear path now, I can go ahead and do what I want to do. Because you ever notice that if you're a driver and you're driving and that clear path open up, the first thing you do is you start off a little slow, but then you get you start to get into going. You start moving. Now you, you just drive. I don't know what was going on back there, but I'm going to get where I got to go. You know, you got your mind set upon where you want to be at. But sometimes we have to understand that even though we want that clear field, we want nobody to interfere with us. And we could be driving, we don't want to interfere. And all of a sudden, here comes a little light flashing behind you. It's the police officer light. And he flying, and you go flying. And the first thing you go is, oh, Lord, I'm about to get a ticket. And then you slow down, and he passed by you. And the first thing you go is, it ain't me. You know what I mean? You're thinking about that because what's another obstacle that's pulling you away? So then your mind gets back to maybe I need to just take it easy and drive at a certain speed for this moment because I need to get there because sometimes God has to send some warnings to you. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Sometimes God has to send warnings to you to make you pay attention to some things. Sometimes you have to do some things. You ever notice that you could be outside and you could be doing some things and, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. And all of a sudden, you know, somebody say to you, oh, no, you yeah, have your drunk. You're like, oh, no, I don't, I'm not thirsty. I'm not drinking. And all of a sudden you get a cramp or a hit in your leg or something. That's your warning sign that you need to go and get some water. Right. You know, you start start looking over. All of a sudden you start feeling all dizzy and anything. You you start moving a little bit. You say, oh, well, in the event, you start looking around. The first thing you start thinking about is that I drink enough water. Did I take my medicine? You know, all the things that God has put before you is your warning signs. And sometimes what happens is that we put our own selves in the way. Amen. Glory to God. And we forget to do that. Amen. But every once in a while, we, we get, we, we'll do some things like that. See, because we're, 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 we want that clear scenario but life doesn't give us that clear scenario all the time does it not at all most of the time we're we're fighting to deal with the obstacles that are in front of us some of people right now they're dealing with obstacles right at this moment somebody got the obstacle right now i can't i i, I obstacle of technology the obstacle of finance the obstacle of health the obstacle of, of anger, the 
obstacle or whatever the obstacle. I mean, I could go down a whole list. We'd probably be here for 20, 30, 20, 30 days, and I still would not be able to finish all the obstacles that might be in the way. But you have obstacles in the way. Some of them you talk about, some of them you're not going to talk about because that's just how you are. That's how, how most people are. We're not going to talk about every particular obstacle. Not everybody need to know all those things. Just know that you need to be, somebody need to be praying with you, right? You know, we got the obstacles going on. I don't know what it is. It might be mental. It could be physical. It could be spiritual. You got spiritual obstacles. And amen, we're going to speak about a little bit of something like that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if you could deal with them all at one time, wouldn't you be happy? I could deal with everything at one time. To put one big check mark on it. I don't deal with all these obstacles. I don't got the word. I could sit back and put my put my my car my myself in the cruise mode, and I can just cruise on through. But remember, if you're driving, you can only cruise for a little while until you're gonna have to hit the brakes and stop or do something. Because sometimes we got to move out the way and not be the drivers, but be the passenger. See, because when we're dealing with Jesus, we're the passengers. But sometimes we can be the obstacle. Oh, I, I, I want to wanna bring you there now. So I know that if you're wise and you know that you need to get did help to get rid of the obstacle because sometimes we need that when you're wise and you start thinking about say, so I need help to get rid of these obstacles because you have tried it. Some of us have tried to get rid of our obstacles on our own and we're doing a very good job. Y'all doing a very good job at it. But it's still there. So sometimes we need some help. So we need to call up on something and do some things. I'm going to take you to some places, but I also want you to do me a favor. If you don't want to follow me, just turn yourself to 1 Samuel in the 17th chapter. Just stay right there if you would like to. That's the, that's the chapter we're going to be talking through, okay? All right, but I'm going to be bringing you there in a minute. Amen. Glory to God. I promise not to be before you too long. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Like I said, there's a couple of things I want to do, and I, I felt it in my heart. Amen. Even to do communion today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we have a special message as well. Amen. That I'm going to make sure that we make sure that we pray as well. Amen. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning to Sister Morales and uh, Sister Serenity. And I believe I have a uh, Sister Bridget and I believe there might be even Sister Gwen on the line and amen. Glory to God. And I bless each and every one of the evangelists, amen, that I see and hear on the phone, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, bless each and every one of you, amen, evangelist outlaw, evangelist lady sunshine strong, evangelist hooks, hallelujah, deacon Steve and deaconess Anita, amen, and my wonderful and better, best part of my, my whole being amen glory to god my leading lady amen glory to god god bless you as well amen so in isaiah the 57th chapter in the 14th verse it says this and it shall be said i'm reading from the english standard version i'm also going to be reading from the um king james version when i get there i'll let you know build up build up prepare the way Remove every obstruction from my people. Move every obstruction from my people. There are things in your lifetime. There are things from when you were young to where you are now that's still an obstacle that is in your way that you've been fighting against and fighting around for all this time. And you ask God to 
to to help you fight this thing and for some of us who are on a different path they was like i can't fight this no more lord you're gonna have to take it because the moment that you just said i'm taking my hands off of it you no longer are the driver remember now once you said i'd take your hands off it, you became the passenger so that means god was the driver so that means he's driving that situation jesus driving that situation Oh, I'm, I'm just trying to help you get somewhere. Somebody say move. Get out. Move. The way. move. Get, out the get, way. Out the way. get out the way. Get out the way. See, you're doing something with it now. See, I, I, I need you to, uh, I want to, I want to, I want to hold on right here. Deaconess Anita. I just want you to shake my head or you can shake it yes or no. But did that move out the way sound convincing to you? Hmm? Amen. Huh? Did it sound Amen. like it was convincing that they were well, or what did they really put any hurt for it? Did you did you feel that? I felt it, yes. You, Amen. you felt it. Yeah, I made it. You, you felt it. Amen. I did not feel it. Oh. Oh, Lord. I'm looking for y'all to tell me something. I'm going to tell you why I'm asking you to say this. There's a reason for it. You got to trust me today. Uh -oh. And Amen. I need y'all to say, move. 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 Get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. Right. Yeah. See, because what you're doing right now is you're speaking this into the atmosphere. Ah, oh, come on now. A little Amen. Bullshit. Yeah, no, no, no. I see it moving now. There's a movement that you're speaking into the atmosphere. Is you're speaking against that spiritual thing that's trying to hold you up. But you mm -hmm. got to be able to have the authority that you have right there to mm -hmm. let it know that you're getting ready to tell it you got to move. Be not because I told you so, because my father gave me to tell you. He said right here that I'm going to remove every obstacle, obstruction from my people's way. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking mm -hmm. to that thing that's hanging around you. Ah. That fear, oh my God. That anxiety, that sickness, that anger, that upsetness. Mm. Mm, those promiscuous ways. Oh, I'm telling you that even the distractional things, amen, mm. that will come in your direction in the name and authority of Jesus. So once again, I'm going to ask you to say to me, move, get out the way. Move, move. get out, get the, out way. the way. Get out now the repeat way. after me this one word, I'm following the Lord. I'm following, I'm following the Lord. Lord. I'm following that, the Lord. So that, that means that if you're following the Lord, that means that anything that's out there that's in your way, I'll, they have to understand who it is that you're following. Amen. Once again, I think I spoke to somebody and I said, you don't have to use a lot of words. All you have to say is God rebuke you. Mm hmm. You got to understand uh, who we are. See, Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter in the 6th verse says this, be strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goeth with you. Your backup, oh Hallelujah. Your pilot, amen, because you the driver, remember? You let go of the wheel now. And you're now, now no longer driving. You're the co-pilot. Amen. Oops. Let me bring that back to you again. You're not even the co-pilot. God's driving. That means Jesus is the co-pilot. Oh, you can't even be the third one because the Holy Ghost is right here. So that means you got to be in the fourth seat. With all that protection around you. 
And God said, be courageous. Do not fear. Do not dread them for the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. I'm trying to tell some people over here today, even though I know it's Mother's Day, there's obstacles in everyone's way that you're now going to have to speak to, and you got to be able to speak to it with authority. Amen. Amen. When certain obstacles get in your way, we have to pray for our help. And we must believe that the Lord thy God has it and has you. I'm reminded, amen, if you would turn your Bibles, glory to God, to the wonderful book of Samuel, amen, glory to God, the 17th chapter, amen, we're going to be getting to read from the first verse, I'm reading from the King James Version, amen. Glory to God. Do you have your Bibles with you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The only word of God. Hallelujah. I think the people on Facebook, because they over here, they, they over there telling me is move out the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. They know what's going on over here. But I'm sorry to tell y'all that Facebook fans, y'all can't, as much as y'all are, y'all can't beat the people on Zoom today. The people on Zoom is on point today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible reads as thus. Said first Samuel, the 17th chapter. Reading from the first verse. Now, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh -uh. Now in my Bible, I got now and then I got a space between. I don't know about y'all. Y'all might not have no space in between your Bible, you know. But I got now. Okay, I want you. To, now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Stockham, where which belongeth to to Judea. And pitched between Shoxion and oh, Akiza, I'm messing this up today, and Ephes Damnus, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched in the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Amen. Sometimes you got to try to come out there when people are coming against you. You got to be able to know that sometimes you have to be able to, to do some things because you can't always retreat all the time. Mm, amen. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out champions out of the camp of Philistines named Goliath of Goth, and his height was six cubits and a span. That means he was about nine feet, 75 inches tall. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he waxed armed, was a coat of maw, and the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. This man was all bronzed up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Your enemy... Well, always the obstacles, the enemy, I want you to write obstacles. Your obstacles are always sometimes appear as they're too big for you to handle. Mm. They want to create, hallelujah, the appearance of something that they know that God told you that you should not have, and that's fear. Mm. And he grieved the legs between the shoulders 
and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. Now, maybe you uh, might not have caught that in this scenario. But Goliath did not go down by himself. It said that one who bared, was bearing a shield went before him. So someone came with a shield, but then I don't know how big this shield was that was going to hold this nine foot, almost 10 foot tall person in brass with a big old spear heavier than you ever seen. And it's staring at you, bronze and shining and, and he glaring and everything like that. So I know that you're sitting there and you're looking at your obstacles and your obstacles are, are sometimes looking like this. Some of y'all got obstacles right now that are just that big that you've been looking at. Like I can't defeat this obstacle. I'm talking to somebody today. Amen. Come on. I want to talk to you a little bit. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, unto them, say, where are you? Come out and set your battle in array. Am I not a Philistine and your servant to Saul? Choose you a man from you and let him come down to me. Bring your best, homie. Is what he's saying. I'm not afraid. I'm this obstacle and I'm not afraid of what you got. because he could sense the fear in the people. Sometimes your obstacles feed off of your fear. Sometimes it knows what you're doing, so it has an opportunity to whisper in your ear the things that you cannot do, trying to make you weaker than who you really are, to try to make you forget who you really are, to try to make you step aside from where you really are. I'm going to help somebody today. And if he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. Uh oh. Mm. And if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Sometimes the obstacles that we have is a life or death situation. That if you lose this battle, you might become subservient to it. Oh, I'm going to help somebody today. Somebody might be in this same scenario right now. You might be in that particular area. You might be going through some things. You might have something in your hand. You might have something on the table. You might have something rolled up. You might have something you're getting ready to drink that's causing you to become your obstacle that is trying to say that I'm stronger than you are. Mm. That you're going to be my servant. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Oh, come on. I want you to bring your strongest because I know that I'm all that and a bag of chips. Mm -hmm. And when Saul and his armies heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed. Ah, come on now. And they were what? What's it saying in verse 11? They were what? Dismayed. dismayed. And what? Dismayed. Greatly afraid. Afraid. Mm -hmm. sometimes in our lifetime come on i'm talking with you sometimes in your lifetime you get out there and you get afraid because the situation of that obstacle has got you to a point where i know that i'm in an area or a territory that i have never been at before and i'm not sure what's going on and everything that they say around you has got you frightened because you know that the consequences of it might be something detrimental to not only you but to your family I got an obstacle that I got to face and I don't know what to do. Now, God 
heard about the obstacle. Because he was listening to it from the beginning. I believe that the Lord allowed him to speak that obstacle in the way. So that he can put those things on. Because he started in the beginning with that first word. What was that first word at the first beginning of the first chapter of this? The first now. word was now. Now. Now we're going to verse 12. And what is the first word? Now, now, which means that God said that after I allowed you to speak all these particular things, now you caused me to activate. Mm -hmm. So now David was a son. Ah, I feel that. Oh, God, I don't you feel that moving through you? Something going on right in the atmosphere. Somebody's break. Something I just something just broke. Glory. Oh, my God. Listen now. Now, David was the son of an Israelite of Bethlehem. Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to battle, to the battle. And the names of the three sons that went out the battle was Elib, the firstborn. Next to him is Ab. Abedimba, and the third was a Shama. And David, hallelujah, was the youngest of the, and the three elders followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented him 40 days. Come on now, I want to stop right there for just one second. How many days did it rain? 40. 40. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. This man came up there and dealt with these people for how many days? 40. There's got to be something about that nature of time. You ever notice that when you get a bill, you get it, and you usually get it in the first 10 days, and then they tell you by 30 days of this letter, you got to go and take care of something, especially if you're in a situation. Mm -hmm. That's usually about 40 days. Mm -hmm. They take 30 days, but they give you a, 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 a grace period of 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And Jesse said unto David, his son, I'm reading from the seventh, verse 17, amen. Take down, down their brethren and ephod of this pat, parchment of corn and these 10 loaves and run to camp to thy brethren and carry these 10 cheeses unto the captain of the thousands and look, and look how the brethren fare and take their pledge. Um, just saying, sometimes it takes somebody else sometimes to come and take a look. I mean, the situation might be going on, but you know, everybody, every every once in a while, will come out there and they'll tell you. And now there's people who will come to you and see you and say to you, hey, how you doing? And you'll be like, I'm doing all right. And then they'll go back and they'll say to themselves, boy, they don't know if they're doing all right. Mm -hmm. You got that one person that will come over there and they will check on you. See how you doing, bring you some bread, bring you some food, whatever it may be, send you something that you need, you know, just bring you even a smile or ask you, just go out there, hug you, talk to you, whatever. And then they go back and they talk to the person like your, your mama, your daddy, your aunts, or your uncles, whoever it may be. And they would say, well, listen, I've been over such and such. They, they, they're going through some stuff. They are right, but they're going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. They need our help, but they need, they need, they need, they need the kind of help that 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 that's going to go out there and if we reach out in a certain way you know maybe they might accept it but if, if some certain person come and reach out for it they might do it there's always one person in your family that if they tell you or ask you to do something no matter who it is for some strange reason you're gonna go ahead and do it mm -hmm. 
if somebody says to you, I come to your house and I knock on your door and I say, I want to give you this money, you might be like, no, 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 no. But I might have to hand it off there and I say, I'm going to give Avengers Outlaw this money to give give over here to, to uh, uh, Evangelist Hooks. And Evangelist Hooks might might not accept it from me, but she might say, okay, well, you know, Evangelist Outlaw might say, well, this blessing came to me and now I got to bless you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes we need those things to help ourselves. Remember now, we're still talking about obstacles in our way. Amen. Glory to God. So, so now sometimes when you're in the middle of an ob in, in the middle of obstacle, sometimes you don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, you don't know how how you're going to do it. But but we, we're gonna go back here a little bit. Come on, y'all, stay with me. Y'all still with me? Amen. 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 Glory to God. You still with me on Facebook? Somebody say Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on back over there on Facebook. I know that y'all just turned away. Turn on back and come and visit us. I've seen you on Facebook. You shouldn't be looking at that stuff. You should be following these words right here. Come on, y'all. Ah, amen. Glory to God. Thank you, my sister. There you go. I feel you now. You done made me feel better. I know that you done tuned in. Preach it, Pastor. I'm, a, I'm, about, I'm, about, I'm about to go. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> Glory. That's all right. You can keep on going. That's because the enemy don't want you to hear this message. That's why he's trying to kick you out. But don't worry about it. We got so many ways to come on back in. It's all right. If you can't make it one way, jump on Zoom. If you can't make it another way, call on conference line. We got you. Because God is not going. God is right here. He's a God of miracles. He's a God of right now. And because you're going through it, it's because that's an obstacle. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm talking to you on Facebook. I hear you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he was going to take this wonderful stuff to him. I'm paraphrasing right now, but I'm going to go through here. And now Saul and they, all the men of Israel, were in the Valley of Eli fighting with the Philistines and getting their fight on. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shout, and they shouted for the battle, for the Israel and the Philistines had put their battle in array army against army. And David left his carriage in the hands of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Coming to check on you. Mm -hmm. You know, every once in a while, while you're in the midst of an army, Jesus got to come and check on you. Amen. He'll send an angel to check on you. He'll send somebody on the outside to check on you. Mm -hmm. Amen. While you're in the midst of an article, in the midst of the obstacle, when you're in the midst of the thing, amen, the pastor sometimes be sitting there in the background, in the, in the, in the spiritual world, just looking upon you, doing just like this. Praying amen. Amen. In every area, he sees some things that you see. Amen. He might not even say nothing to you. Oh, I could tell you about some stuff, but I ain't going to tell you about it because I ain't. It ain't nobody business but you and God. Hallelujah. And I just know that He put me on assignment just to sit back there and be the watcher sometimes and pray for you in the midst of things and be able to know God's put you in front, see what's going on. I know now what I pray for, God. Uh, David, he brought forth. Come on, I want to. We 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 bringing this down in a whole different level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now we we get there and we go through the trench and he shouted and, and David left his carriage and, and and he runs into the army and salutes the brethren and they and he's talking with them and behold came the champion here came the big boy in the brass. Now he's coming out there just styling and profiling. I got my shine on. <laughs> What did he say? And then the champion of Philistines of God came Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And this time, David heard. Sometimes in you, oh my God. Come on, I want to bring this in you. Inside each and every one of you. Come on, I want y'all to look at me. If you can't look at me, just hear me. If you can't, just tune your ears, cut everything else down. 
God, we need you to get this. This is so important. In each and every one of you, there is a David. In each and every one of you, there is a David. And that David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and they were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him the his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Jesus wants to help your obstacle. And when he goes, he says, I'm going to make you free. Oh, uh, I'm going to get you there in a minute. But the obstacles that you have says something about that nature, you see, because the David in you is getting ready to do something. But the Bible says that he who's free is free what? Indeed. Come on, I need somebody to talk to me. I, I'm not hearing nobody talking with me, but that's all right. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's okay. Thank you, free Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He's free indeed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So then it got to this point. He said, I will give him his father out. And David spoke. Ah, oh, come on. Remember now, this little part of David's is inside you. Amen. This this is you now. You ain't you ain't no longer who you are. You David. And you spoke to the man by st that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I mean i.e. this is not a man who is of God because if he was of God in those days he would have been circumcised who is this person uncircumcised meaning this trashy individual David talking junk hmm. David said that he should defile the army of who? The Bible says of God. Does it say that? Amen. Or does it say something else? The living God. What? What does it say, Deacon? The living, living God. God. That means that we, the God, the God that we're serving is the God is a living God. That means that God is moving right now in you. That David in you is speaking to who is this obstacle? Come on. You already said move out the way. Mm -hmm. Who is this obstacle in my way that's trying to defy my living God? Mm -hmm. Come on. you. I'm talking. I'm trying to help somebody today. And the people answered him after the man is saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eleb, the eldest son, brother, heard when he spake unto the man. And Eleb's anger was kindred against David because sometimes when you speak against an object and an obstacle, things that might be around it, some people might catch an attitude because you're speaking against something, not because they're mad at the fact that you, you spoke against it. They're mad at the fact that you waited, how you spoke to that obstacle, like, like and, and, and they're trying to get an understanding of how you got so brave. Mm, amen. He said, I, it was kindred against him. And David, and he said, why camest thou here with them whom thou left thou few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou might see the battle. And David said, what have I done? What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And then he turned from him to another and spake in the same manner. 
And the people answered him again for this former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. This young boy is trying to say something. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. You're about to go and fight with this obstacle, but you've been fighting. Wait a minute now. Y'all been fighting the obstacle for a very long time. Amen. But you haven't been fighting in the way that God wants you to fight. So even though you're invoking him in, you have to realize that you had to go inside you and pull out your inner David. Mm. Because Amen. now... Your inner David is about to come out. I'm helping somebody. Amen. And that inner David says, you don't have the word. Thy servant will go out and fight this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but youth and he is a man of war from his youth. You don't have no kind of skill in war. How can you, young man, young lady, young woman, young child, come out here and want to fight this obstacle? You can't do it. And David Ah, I believe he was under the spirit of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him, and slew him. Oh, you looked at me like I was a young one, but I'm the one who's appointed to take after the sheep. I'm talking to y'all right now as the pastor. I'm made it to take after the sheep, which means that I got the authority and I know how to fight against the ones who are getting ready to try to snatch something that ain't supposed to be snatched. Amen. And he said, I threw it. I threw it inside of you. Your David is about to come out. I can feel you moving. You're moving out the way. David's trying to move on the side. He's rattling inside of you. Your body system's shaking a little bit. And all of a sudden, he said, I went out and I smote him by the mouth. And the servant drew the lion and the bear with his own. And the servant circumcised press Palestine shall be as one of them seeing that thou hast defiled the armies of the living God. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody going to talk about my heavenly father and think that you're going to get away from it because he'll give me the strength to push through some things. Now that obstacle that's in your way, that obstacle that you have before you, that obstacle is going to go in a certain direction. Oh, come on, stay with me. I'm going to bring you there to the mm -hmm. end. Amen. Glory to God. And so, and David said, moreover, the Lord had delivered me out of the paws of the lion and out of the paws of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hands of this Philistine. Uh, come on now. This obstacle that you're in, God has definitely delivered you out of some other areas. And now since he delivered you out of some other areas, don't you think that he's going to deliver you right now? Amen. Come on. And Saul's army, and, 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 and Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. He started to recognize, oh, my God, that the Lord was with this young man. I got to have no other son. He might have wanted to say something else out of his mouth. But when he opened up his mouth, God filled it and said, go, the Lord be with you. Oh, once again, he spoke over David's life. The Lord be with you. 
didn't know that when he was speaking over David's life and said, the Lord be with you, that he was actually saying, I'm not only giving you the Lord be with you, but I'm giving you the kingship. It's, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Hallelujah. Man. And David and Saul armed David with armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he also armed him with a coat of mall. And David girded his sword upon the armor, and he aside to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. I have not practiced with this. And David put them off of him. This is not what I'm going with. Sometimes when we are in the midst of articles, when we are in the midst of objects when we are in the midst of obstacles we're in the midst of problems where a lot of people might come with all of the law books in the world but isn't it wonderful to walk in there with your Bible? because i did not prepare myself with the law books but i prepared myself with the bible and i prepared myself with god I didn't come in here with all the things of man. I came in here with something who created man. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all don't have to say nothing else. Somebody mm -hmm. tell me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you can't, then I'm going to tell you to move out the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory oh, to Lord. God. Hallelujah. Move. Get out the way. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. amen. And as he's doing something, and, and he took them off, and he took his staff in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want y'all to come and think about this, because we're going we're gonna to be stopping pretty soon, but I want you to get somewhere. That in the midst of your obstacles, in the midst of your things, and your spiritual things, battles that you're fighting right now. Amen. Glory to God. Remember that I want you to reach down and hallelujah in your physical. You could use your, 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 your physical hands and reach into the spiritual and pull out five smooth stones. And even though you cannot see them, you just pick them up and put them on your table, wherever they may be. You might have it in your hand right now and say, this is my five fat stones. This is my five smooth stones. Amen. And he put them in his shepherd's bag that he had with the scrap and he sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine and the Philistine came and drew near unto David and the man that bathed with the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about, he saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou cometh with me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Small g, by the way. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. And David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. Ah, come on. I want to stop right here for just one second. Remember that the shield was somebody else holding the shield up. Remember? So that means that he came before him with something else. Amen. Glory to God. But this is what David came with because he said, I brought my shield too, but you didn't understand it. Come on. I want you to get an understanding that when you go and fight against your obstacle, you're also bringing your shield. Okay, here it goes. I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who thou hast defiled. God said, I am your shield and buckler. Didn't he say that? Mm -hmm. You go and look it up in the Bible. It's there. He said, I am your shield. Yes. So therefore, when David came, he came with God. Where's his shield? This other man, Philistine, he came with somebody, but he didn't come with God. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. And this day, ah, come on. Remember now, way back at the beginning, I told you to say what? Now. Move. Move. Get, get out, out the, way. the way. I told you that it was because you were getting ready to speak into the atmosphere what was getting ready to be done. Right? David said this. Remember now, this is the David in you getting ready to speak once again. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite the obstacle. I'm going to break you today. This day, God has put that obstacle in my way. And I'm going to smite the, I'm going to break it today. Hallelujah. And I will take the head off of it, off of thee. And I will give thy carcass unto the host of the Philistine. This day, unto the fowl of the air. And to the wild beasts of the earth, to all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. There is my God that's in me, has put this on myself, that that obstacle has no choice but to break or move. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our, our hands. And it came Amen. back. When the Philistine rose and came and drew nigh to David, and David hesitated and ran toward the army to meet the Philistines, David pulled his hand into his bag. Come on, I need you to reach out there and put your hand into your spiritual bag, and I need you to pull out one flat stone. And I want you to use your slingshot that you got, your spiritual slingshot. You might have it rolling in the air right now. And I want you to sling it at that obstacle that's causing you so much issues. Amen. And he smote the Philistine on the forehead. And his soul sunk into the forehead. And he fell in his face to the earth. So it was David prevailed over the Philistine. And with a sling and a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in David's hand, the hands of David. David therefore ran and stood upon the Philistine and took the Philistine's sword. I'm just adding a thing. He took the sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head. And therewith, and when the Philistine saw that the chimney was dead, they fled. I want to stop right there. I can go a little bit more, but I won't. I just want to go into this. David came and he used five flat stones. He didn't need all of them. He just pulled out five of them out the brook. When he put his hands into his, his sleeve to pull out the stone, and he was going with his slingshot, he was going by faith. He didn't know what type of stone it was going to be there. It could have been a flat stone with not a sharp edge, but he pulled out the right one because he went by faith and not by sight. So when he was going there and he was moving, he was going by the faith that God was going to bring him through because he brought him through so many other obstacles in the other ways. So that's what I'm trying to tell you right now. God is getting ready to bring you out of all the obstacles that you're into at the moment because he has brought you out of all the rest of the obstacles that were in your way. And this big obstacle that has been holding on to you for such a long time is now getting ready to break down because this obstacle will no longer be a part of your life anymore because once again, once it goes and falls this time god said that you can go and cut the head off of it hallelujah glory which means that you will no longer have an opportunity for this obstacle to bother you because it will no longer be a part of you because it's not of god it's been pushing against you and telling you what god won't do so now i'm going to let you know that god said i'm going to show exactly what the obstacle exactly what i'm going to do through you because if i did something it would go away right away but i want everybody to get an understanding of the glory of me in you so i'm going to let him move in a certain way but when i get ready to speak and say now 
things Hallelujah. are going to change within you. And when I say now, that means that I'm getting ready to take over the scenario. And he went and took over the scenario. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says this. Hallelujah. The Bible says this, amen. In Psalms 27 and 1, I'm almost done, amen. Glory to God. He says of David, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I be afraid? In your lifetime, we have to remember that there will be many obstacles in your lifetime. There are going to be many problems. Doesn't mean that you won't go through them. It just means that it won't break you. It also means that you have the fortitude to speak to the situation and to let the situation know who you are and whose you are. Now, what happens to some of us is that Jesus drives us through our situations and then we want to jump back and drive the will. If you're in a certain way, let Christ drive. Mm -hmm. I need you to tell fear to move out the way. See, I need you to tell sickness to move out the way. I need you to tell your enemy to move out the way. I'm going to say it again. I need you to tell fear to move out the way. I need you to tell sickness to move out the way. I need you to tell your enemy to move out the way. I need you to tell yourself to move out the way because you're in the hands of God. Tell that giant that today your time is up. Where's my flat stone? Where's my slingshot? I don't need much more than just these few things. For the Lord is by my side. Tell the obstacle, your time is up. The door is right there and you need to go through. Your keys have been revoked. Your parking lot pass has been taken. The tow truck is awaiting. Your papers have been served. It is time for the obstacles that are holding you up from coming to God, from doing what God has desired you to do. I know life comes around. I know things come around. I know obstacles get in the way. But you still have to remember who you are and whose you are. You are the children of God. Hmm. Tell the obstacles to move out your way. If there's anyone on this line, if there's anyone on Facebook, on Zoom, on the conference line, who is desiring to be saved. I want to let you know that we can't save you. You have to save yourself. We'll give you the tools to get you to where you need to be. But it's up for you to take that walk. I can't pull you. I can't drag you. 
but you got to step on your own. I need you to know the things we're doing. I need you to understand where God is taking. So if your mind, if your desire to be saved, I'm asking you to come forth. If you're on Facebook, you can call 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. And we will get in touch with you, be with you. Glory to God. If you're desiring, hallelujah, that you are walking down the aisle, you've been saved, but you step back. You said to yourself, I moved in a certain way. I, I kind of done some things that aren't there. I, I, I messed up a little bit. I dropped the ball some. Well, come on and let me pray for you. Most heavenly and kind Father, God, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, asking you that you move like never before. Ask you that you overflow in our area. Forgive us right now, Father, for anything that we've done, said, did, thought, or even dreamed. I dropped the ball, Lord. I messed up, Lord. I've done all the things that I'm not supposed to do. And Lord, I'm asking you right now that I repent and ask you to try me one more time. Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Glory amen. to God. For those of you who is desiring for a church home. Amen. Glory to God. You're desiring for a church home. Thank you, Jesus. This could be the place for you. Amen. Amen. But as I always tell everyone, amen, you should always look at what we believe in, amen, and what we believe in is online. You can go to www.wordofthelamb.org and look upon what we believe in, but I also ask you to do the same thing for any church you go to so you will always know what you believe in. But if you have read what we believe in and you agree with it, amen, glory to God. And you're desiring to have a church home. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you desire to be on watch, because there's some people who are been on watch, which means that they have a church home, but they've been away from them for so long. Amen. That they wanted to spend some time being in the church. To, they, they haven't made that commitment and they want to be someplace. And it's a good place to be. Amen. There's people who have been on watch with us. Amen. Glory to God who are still on watch. And some of them who have said that they, they no longer want to be on watch and they have become members. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you desire that, then would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Well, Father, I've done, hallelujah, what you have asked me to do. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Father God. I have called them for those who desire to be saved. I have prayed for those who have dropped the ball. I had opened the doors of the church, Father. I have called on those who desire to be in watch. And Lord, I ask you that you bless them all in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Um, like I've said earlier this today, amen, glory to God. I had the feeling that I wanted to go and, and do um, a communion, amen, glory to God. 
And um, I know we did it last week, amen, but I, I go by what my what what the spirit tell me to do, and amen, I'm going to, to do just that, amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. And I'm going to go through communion, amen, a little quickly, but I'm gonna ask everybody, I want you to all please, please do me a favor. After communion, just hold on a second. There's something special that I wanna be able to play for you, amen, but I can't do it. I wanna be able to do it, amen, for, for each and every one of you, amen, so that you can, you can see some things, amen, glory to God, amen. Can I get an amen? Stay amen. with me, amen, glory to God. Amen. Stay with me, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to I'm going to be reading. I know that I didn't prepare anybody. I'm just wanted to, to do communion. Amen. Glory to God. And anybody who desires that they want to do communion with me. Amen. If you have juice, if you have crackers, amen. Glory to God. If you have any of those things of that nature, amen. Glory to God. Just grab them real quick. Amen. We're we're going to to to, to do just that. For those who have have people who they wanted to, to, to say I'm sorry with, go out there and tell the Lord I'm sorry. Amen, glory. I tell them, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for anybody who I, I got, an, got an attitude with, made mad, did some things for. God, I repent right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask you that you have your way. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, glory to God. Amen. And I'm going to start our amen this communion. Amen, real quick. Amen. I'm reading from St. John's, the 13th chapter and the second verse. And it reads as this. And after supper had ended, the devil, I'm reading from the King James Version, having now put into the heart of J Judas Zechariah, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the fathers had given all things unto him, his hands, and that they was come from God and went to God. He rises from supper and he laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. And after he had poured water into a basin, he began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus said, un said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He that had washed need not save to wash his feet, but is clean ever with. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who shall betray him. And therefore he said, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and taken their garments and sat down again, he said unto them, know thee that I have done to you. You call me look master and Lord, and ye say, well, for I am. If I then your Lord and master have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Well, I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord. Neither is he that sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Amen. We do believe in washing of the feet. Amen. Glory to God. And, you know. When we have a chance, we will be doing those. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's important. Amen. You know, glory to God. First Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 34. Amen. For I have received of the Lord, which I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he had took, was, was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given things, he break it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. For you. Do this do and remember some. After the same manner, also he took a cup and he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it and remember some me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily 
shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick and sickly among you, and many sleep. That means passed away. For if you were, if we were judged according, judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when you have come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you shall that ye shall not come together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the God. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm going to prepare. This is if anybody has has one of these cups and desires to do this. We we have two things here where we have our, our cracker in our cup and 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 then pull it out as such as you can see right here. And I'm reading from from Luke the 22nd chapter verses 19 through 20. And he took the bread and he gave thanks. Father, I give thanks for this bread. I ask you that you move within it, Father. I'm also going to ask you to bless this wine as we have, Father God, and I ask you to bless each and every one of them, Father God, in the name and authority of Jesus. And he said, Take this. This is the body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat all of it, the body of Christ. In the likewise manner, he took of the wine and the cup and said, this is the cup, which is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Drink you all of it, the blood of Christ. And they said that after he took the bread and they drank the cup, they sung a song. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, the blood. Oh, oh the blood has God. signed my name. Oh, the blood. Oh, Jesus, Jesus blood. Oh, the blood don't sign my name. Oh, the blood. Jesus, Jesus blood. blood. Oh, the blood of my name. Oh, the blood of my name. Hallelujah. Glory to hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for those that are there. I'm, hallelujah. Some people are saying right now at the moment, amen, that they do just communion on the first uh, of, of, of the month. Amen. Glory to God. But the Bible says that you do this in offering as your remembrance. Amen. Glory to God. So you can have communion almost every day of the week if you desire. Mm -hmm. Amen. With that being said, amen. I want you to, to, to be able to tune in with me. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just stay, stay put with me. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Being with me, with me. Amen. Yes, I. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If I can get this other little thing over here. Glory and glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, glory to God. This is something special. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please listen to this and, and, and let God enjoy you. Amen. To my mom, thank you for being what I needed, when I needed it the most. He loved me and I didn't love myself. I know it took a long time to get to the place where we are now, but no, I wouldn't have it any other way. Mom, you mean the world to me. The relationship we have now wasn't always this because of the trauma you and I both went through. But in my darkest moments, Mom, I found you again. I realized that you have been fighting for me my whole life. It took me a while to see it, but mom, I see it and I see you. I know that my siblings aren't really there in their life, so I will 
have the same courage you did and take the role of protector. The role of movie nights, talking and great laughs for them. I will be what you needed from them to you. Mom, you're my whole world wrapped up in one. I see your change as a woman, a mother, and a person, and my friend. And I love you even more for it. I will always be your mini me. I appreciate you in ways you could not imagine. The one person who never left my side. You may not be able to love me your whole life, but I will love you for yours. Thank you for showing me not to be like you, but better. You gave me strength when you had none. You gave me courage when you were scared. You gave me words of wisdom. You gave me courage when you were scared. You gave me words of wisdom when you didn't know what to say. I love you past my heart, mom. I love you with my spirit. I am the woman I am today, not in spite of you, but because of you. I love you, mom, always and forever. No one will ever love you the way I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. I just called <laughs> to say I love you. I love you, mom. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Did every mother said, Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, God. That was my Mother's Day gift and, and, and a true gift that she is. And she even went to explain a part of what she said, basically, when she said, that she that I couldn't love her for the rest of my life. She was talking about that she wants to leave this earth before I do, and that's why she said that. Um, and uh, I'm thanking God because the sermon today, the word of God today, was for me. Thank you, God. He he, I didn't have the hand to do what I needed to do. And God, with his awesome majesty, led me to a book when I heard this, gave me the stone of courage that I needed to and do what I needed to do. So, in him for the world Lay my giant. He put that serenity stone right in my hand. And I'm thanking God for the wonderful gifts and for my daughter, my grandbaby, my church family. And I wanted to share this moment with each and every one of you because your prayers have been holding me up. Your prayers has been impacting my life in such a real way. Prayer, he listens to your prayers. Don't ever stop praying for each and every person in your life. God will show you what prayer can do. So I thank each and every one of you. I am so proud of my daughter for the woman she's become and everything that God is doing in her and through her. And I'm just, I feel so blessed to be a part of this ministry and my brother. So happy Mother's Day to you, Serenity, and to each and every wonderful, lovely woman on this line, every evangelist, every deaconess, Thank you, Jesus. every lady, each and every one of you on Facebook. Thank you, God. That your walk will turn into a stone that somebody somebody else pick up in your body. Thank you, God. Oh, to give you the courage to do what you need to do to explain your journey. I thank God for that. I thank God for you, Pastor. Amen. 
Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It would it would um leave me a miss. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know that there's people on the phone and I and I heard some other people, but amen. I'm I know that there's other mothers out there. Amen. Glory to God. Why was Mother's Day? I do want to give you a, a space to speak, amen. Um, Deaconess and neither the um evangelist, um hooks evangelist. Uh, amen. To to you know, because we honor we honor you all as mothers and we honor you, leading lady. We honor you as mothers. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And uh, so we honor each and every one of you. Amen. And I want to give you all a space to 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 say anything that's 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 necessary that you would like to say. Amen. Because it, it is it is your days. And and to be honest with you, I appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. 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 Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I just wanted to. Uh to say, even though we celebrate Mother's Day one day a week, we celebrate it every single day as mothers. So I just wanna say, um, happy Mother's Day. Keep doing what you're doing because we're producing great children, great children yeah. and spiritual children. So even if they don't get it now, they'll get it later. Don't worry Amen. about it. They'll get it later. So happy Mother's Day, enjoy your day and enjoy the days to come. God bless. Amen. Well said. God bless. God bless. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the moms who are on Zoom and the conference line and Facebook and all the ones to see later on. Um, as a mom who comforts her children, her husband, and her grandbabies and anyone that, that needs it, you know, um, it's hard work. It's hard work being a mom, you know, because our children might get older, our grandchildren might get older, but we still see in our eyes to be their protector. For me, as my children are almost near their 40s, one will be in his 40s this year. I still feel I need to protect our babies. But you know, God gives us the necessary strength to be good providers, good moms, to um, be good protectors for our babies. You know, our kids have choices, we have choices. But no matter what, we'll still be their moms. You know, and even to the dads who are out there today, happy Mother's Day to you too, because there's a lot of dads who play that role as mom and dad. And we want to wish all you dads happy Mother's Day who are taking care of their babies right now. You know, we want to give all honor and glory to God first for letting us rise and shine to see another Mother's Day no matter how good or bad I'm feeling right now, because my mom is with the good Lord Jesus. I, 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 I appreciate everything that God has done for so many of you, each and every one of us just to get us through another year. But you know, Mother's Day is every day. And I just wanted to say, God bless you to each and every one of the moms that's on the line. And you guys have a blessed, blessed, happy Mother's Day. Love you all. Love you too, sis. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Any anyone else? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, folks. Can you hear me? Hey, Amen. Yes. We hear you now. Hey, Amen. Amen. Oh. Bless Thank you. you. I thought we was going to have an incident like we did last week, but hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The devil yeah. is a liar. Yeah, that's right. Move that obstacle. I'm gonna um I'm gonna be brief. Take your time. Like mm, Deaconess Alita said, um, Mother's Day is every day. Yes. It's just that they acknowledge us on this day. This is Mother's Day of High Holy Day, okay? 
<laughs> but um, that being said, um, parenting does not come with instruction or manuals. God has birthed into us maternal instincts. that we have before the child even gets here. That's most of the time. Other times, not so. But most of the times, and even if we are first-time moms, we develop that instinct in us because your first child, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna make mistakes, but you learn. It's a learning process being a mother because when that child come in this world, how do you get to know that child? By spending time with that child. You get to know what that child likes, what it don't like. You got you get to know how if they cry, so they have a cry of hunger, cry when they're in pain, a cry when they had they need to be changed. Mm, right. But being a mother surpasses everything. Uh, yeah. And I love it. It's a great experience, and it still is. That's one of the great experiences of my life. God bless all of the mothers out there, and y'all have a very, very, very blessed Mother's Day. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay. Amen. Glory to God. I, I, I believe you might have a, a, a quick word from the leading lady. Amen. Glory to God. Just want to wish everyone a happy and healthy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day. Um, you each in, uh, deserve it. And God bless. Happy Mother's Day to you. Amen. God Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Amen. Now, Lady Stephanie. Now, for for us brothers out there, you know we, we got some we got some work to do. <laughs> you know, so let's let's do do the work that 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 we get we have to do. Um, before we do, um, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to Sister Morales and Sister uh, Miller and. Sister Bridget and all of them, but we also want to pray right now. I want to pray. I want to do a general prayer. Amen. For all of the, the children. Amen. And I was asked about praying for Sister Morales' children as well. So we're going to include all of those in. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So most heavenly and kind Father. Lord, I'm asking you that you will look upon each and every one of the children, Father God. I ask you to look upon Sister Morales' children, Father, from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. I ask you to protect them wherever they may be, Father God, whatever they may be doing, Father God, whatever direction that they're in. I ask you to cover them in every building and every vehicle, Father God. I ask you that you will heal them of all sicknesses and diseases, Father God. Lord, I'm also asking you, Father God, that while you're doing those things on her children, I'm asking you to do the same thing upon her and her family, God. And Lord, I'm asking you to bless them in a special way as well. Lord, I'm asking you that you will look upon Evangelist Hooks, God, and look upon her children and her family, God, her grands and great grands, God. I'm asking you to move in their direction, God. I'm asking you that you touch in every way possible, God. God, I'm asking you that you will touch her children, God, touch her father, God, as well. Cover their building and in their vehicles, God. Continue to overflow in their areas. Lord, I'm asking you to look upon Sister Bridget, Father God, and I'm asking you to bless her and her family, God. I ask you to touch the people around her, Father God, and overflow in her area. I'm asking you to move in their direction, God. I ask you to cover them in every building and every vehicle, God. I ask you to move in their direction. I'm asking you to heal for any sicknesses and diseases. Lord, I'm asking you to look upon Evangelist Lady Sunshine Strong, Father. Look upon her and her husband, James, God. I ask you to bless their children and their grandchildren. God, I'm asking you to move in their direction, Father God. I'm asking you to overflow upon them, Father God, and look upon each and every one of them, Father God, and touch them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet and cover them in every building and every vehicle. Lord, I'm asking you that you will look upon Sister Miller, Father God, and I ask you that you will touch them in a special way, Father God. I ask you that you will overflow upon her children and her grandchildren, her great-grands, God. 
ask you to overflow upon each and every one of them, God. Kill them of all sicknesses and diseases and cover them in every building and every vehicle. Lord, I'm also asking you, God, that you will look upon Deaconess Anita, Father God, and bless her and her children and her grandchildren, God. Ask you to overflow in their area, Father God, and continue to move in their direction, Father. As you look upon the sisters and brothers, the cousins and friends, the aunts and uncles, nephews and nieces on both sides of the family, God. And I'm asking you that they make it a crooked place to straight cover them in every building and every vehicle. Lord, I'm also asking you, Father God, that you will look upon Sister Serenity, Father God. I ask you to bless her and her husband, Eli, Father. I ask you to touch them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Father. Look upon their children and I test you to bless each and every one of them look upon their family members on both sides, Father God, nieces and nephews, cousins and friends, God. And I'm asking you that you move in every direction that there is, Father God. I ask you to make their crooked places straight, cover them in every building, in every vehicle. And Father, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Father, I'm also asking you, Lord Jesus, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, that you will look upon evangelist outlaw, Father God, and Henry outlaw. I ask you to overflow in their areas, Father God. Look upon the children and their grandchildren, God. Ask you to move in their direction, God. Ask you to overflow in their area. Ask you to bless them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet from all sicknesses and diseases and cover them in every building and every vehicle. Lord, I'm also asking you, Father God, that you will look upon all those around us, Father God. Look upon Deacon Steve. Look upon myself, Father God, and bless us in all ways possible. Look upon First Lady and Leading Lady. God, and bless her and our children, God. Ask you to overflow upon them, God. Cover them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Father God. Heal them of all sicknesses and diseases, Father God. Cover them in every building and every vehicle. And Father, I'm asking that you will show favor in all of their lives, Father. Now, Father, of everybody else, Father God, who is connected to us, Father, Everyone else, Father God, who is connected to us by family, friends, or just association, Father. Those who are tuned in wherever they may be, Father God, I ask you that you will bless them as well, Father God. I ask you to open up their hearts, their minds, their understanding, and I ask you that you move into their area. Father, I thank you for what is about to take place, and I thank you for what is about to happen. In Jesus' mighty and humble name, amen. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. Someone's obstacles have mm, someone's obstacles mm. have moved. Hallelujah. I receive it in Jesus' name. Mm, it's moved. Oh my God. I know it's moved because I don't feel the same. Oh, I need a I feel it because as they say. Virtue has left. Alleluia. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I want to say this to each and every one of you. You all Alleluia. said, move out the way. Right? Uh -huh. And the word I just heard was, what was said shall be accomplished. Glory. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank I thank you. you. Hallelujah, glory. Oh, my God. Oh, bless your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, Santo, Santo, Santo. Glory. Yes, I don't know what to say. And I don't know what to say. Hallelujah. 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 I will be on for a couple of minutes for anybody who's desiring prayer you can call 1302202 use 9407920 amen if you're on facebook and desire amen glory to god god bless sister morales our our, our facebook technician <laughs> hallelujah and she says thank you and god bless you and move out the way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, God, you're so good. Glory to God. So we bless you all on Facebook. God bless you. Amen. Those on Zoom, you can still be here. Amen. No problem. For those that are on Facebook, if you desire to be with us, you can jump on Zoom or come on our conference line. As Sister Morales has already put it out there. And you can come out here and get prayer. Just come out in fellowship if you like. 
Amen. Amen. Glory to God. In the name Amen. Of God Amen. bless you all and Amen. for all the money.